I think the thing that makes the Marvel Universe special is a character interaction. And I think this movie has more character interaction than the, any film that's preceded it in the, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, and, and, you know, and you've got uh, Captain America versus Iron Man. What, else, what more could you want? Speaking of which, this question is for Chris Evans. We know that the promotion for the movie is also a battle between Team Cap and Team Iron Man. So how is it going right now, and are we winning the game so far? That's a good question. I, I, I couldn't say for sure. It's been hard keeping my finger on the pulse, given the fact that we're doing our own thing over here. But, uh, you know, I think, I think the entire battle itself will help the movie. The, the, the more kind of buzz we can create, and the more energy we can create with the, with the conflict between the two, the two camps, is only going to help the film. So, so I, I welcome it. Yeah, and I think uh, Team Cap and uh, Singapore are going to answer back in a big way. Yeah, I have so, confidence. Uh, I saw what Downey did in Paris, yes. and it was great. But you know what? I, I, think, I think we can really uh, do something special here in Singapore. To, uh, yeah. Show them that it's all about Team Cap. And of course, it's going to be happening at the Helix Bridge area. Remember, everyone, be there and tell all your friends to be there as well. Best view from the Youth Olympic Park and the Art Science Museum right here at Marina Bay Sands. All right, now before we open up the floor to the questions, very quickly right now, I'd like to start with uh, Director Joe Russo once again. Why should the world catch Captain America Civil War? Um, you know what, I think, uh, I think it's, a, it's a really complex story that, that I, you could you could call a culmination film of everything that has preceded it uh, in the Marvel Universe because it brings all of the characters together uh, uh, in a big family fight. And I think the spectacle is enormous in the film. Uh, um, and I think uh, I think the performances are exceptional. Uh, we have this incredible cast, and uh, and and you know it's it's heartbreaking, but it's also a great deal of fun. So I think you're going to have a really well-rounded experience at the movies. All right, one word for the rest of the superheroes here as to why people should catch Captain America Civil War. One word to describe the movie, Sebastian. Heartbreaking. It's true, I felt, I felt that. Heartbreaking. Uh, how about record setting? <laughs> oh, I mean, it's a hyphen, but give me a break. <laughs> Anthony? Ass kicking? You know, we can relate to everything they just said. Because some of us caught the media screening last night, and when you said heartbreaking, I, I related to that completely. Did you not relate to record-breaking? I related to that as well. <laughs> as well as ass-kicking. <laughs> okay, we'll now open up the floor to the questions. Um, I do believe we have four people walking around with microphones. I would appreciate if you introduce yourself, tell us where you're from, and then ask 
your question. All right, please also tell us who you're directing the question to. All right, let's start off with uh, that gentleman over there. Very first question. This question is for Joe. What was it like going from directing a King Paul Battles in New York Community College to taking this huge fight for this thing at point? And also, how did you and your brother decide who was going to be a team captain and who was going to be a team Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's been a fantastic journey from <clears throat> directing the community to um, directing the Civil War. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of, um, look, <clears throat> filmmaking is filmmaking. You show up and, and you have a camera and there are actors there and you shoot. Uh, certainly there are things that are more complicated about making Marvel movies, uh, you know, uh, especially on the scale that uh, we're working. Um, uh, but we have an incredible support team at Marvel. Our visual effects team is unbelievable. Uh, and, uh, you know, so I think, you know, things that we do in comedy do correlate to Marvel storytelling. We, um, uh, you know, when you execute a physical gag, a comedic gag, there is a lot of correlation to action. It's all spatial relationships on the screen, it's editing, it's rhythm. Uh, and then, um, and then the second, so, so I do, so, you know, to answer the question, not, not a huge difference. Um, uh, but we feel incredibly supported at Marvel and we love the cast, we love what we're doing. I've been collecting comics since I was a kid, so it's a dream come true for me. And the second part of your question was... Uh, how did you and your brother decide who was going to take whose side? Uh, we flipped a coin to decide who was going to take whose side. Uh, we sat in a room for months with uh, the writers Marcus and McFeely and we went through uh, the, um, uh, you know, the cast that we had available to us and the cast that we didn't have available to us and we thought very hard about uh, who would line up against who based on their motivations up to this point in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And of course, we looked for uh, some surprising choices because we didn't want it to be very, you know, completely predictable to the audience as to who was gonna pick which side. Uh, and, and that's, that's how we, uh, we, we, we drew, up the, uh, drew up Team Iron Man and Team Cap. Thank you very much, Joe, and thank you so much for your question. You obviously don't need a microphone. Got a really booming voice, I have to say. Just a reminder, once again, because I saw a few flashes go off, no flash photography, okay? And no live streaming as well. Okay, let's see who's going to get question number two. How about someone from this side? Hi, I'm Liv from Fox Movies Premium. Just want to ask Joe this a question. How is it like um, directing such amazing stars and bringing them all together and having this epic battle, really? Uh, it was pretty incredible directing this cast. Um, I always say it's a, it's a Steven Soderbergh uh, level of cast. I mean, I think Marvel has done uh, an amazing job um, filling out uh, the Marvel Cinematic Universe with some of the best actors in the world. Makes my job very easy. Uh, you know, because uh, um, the other thing that's kind of unprecedented about what Marvel's doing is uh, this is long-form storytelling of a scale that we've, we've never seen before uh, in movies. Sure, there, there, you know, we've seen sequelization, but this is taking major characters from different franchises and interweaving them uh, uh, into one uh, big story. So uh, these, these actors, because they play these parts so much, they, they will know uh, their characters uh, uh, better than my brother and I ever will. So they're, they're the true caretakers of the character, and we work in, in, in collaboration with them uh, on the storytelling and on their characters, on their motivation, on their story arcs. Um, so it's, and working on that giant airport sequence, I think that's what you're referring to, um, was amazing. I mean, it's, it's really uh, uh, that, um, that dream you have as a kid who collects comics of who would win uh, in a fight against whom. And we get to play it out on, on the grandest scale ever. So uh, again, a dream come true. Thank you very much, Joe. Once again, Joe Russo. Director for Captain America Civil War. How about someone um, from the middle, the center, uh, that, that gentleman over here? That gentleman over there. Yeah. Introduce yourself, please. Yes, hi. I'm uh, Chico Garcia from the Philippines, SM Cinema. I would just like to ask, uh, what exactly uh, can we expect from the uh, IMAX RE 2D? I mean, the camera that, uh, like, what exactly does it, um, can we expect from it, and what parts of the movie can we expect it uh, from? So we shot uh, the 17-minute airport sequence uh, that I was referring to exclusively on the, you know, on the IMAX camera. So it's in the IMAX aspect ratio, which is a much higher top-to-bottom ratio. The rest of the movie is shot anamorphic, which is a more, more, which is a, 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 a smaller top-to-bottom aspect ratio. So 
Uh, I, you know, I would absolutely recommend going to see the film in IMAX because you're gonna get incredible scale and scope out of that sequence. And do, making superhero movies, we have a lot of characters who have verticality, uh, meaning in terms of either height or the fact that they fly. Uh, and the frames are very dense in those sequences. There's a lot going on. Uh, you can, you know, there's something happening in the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. Uh, and that, that for the scale of that frame will allow you to see uh, everything that's happening. So I, I would highly recommend it. It was specifically designed uh, for people to experience in that massive uh, IMAX format. I would highly recommend doing it. Thank you, Joe. Well, mic number one to the lady at the end. Hi guys, I'm Yvette King from E! News, and I'm Team Cap, obviously, based on what I'm wearing. Um, Joe, sorry, this question is not for you. <laughs> so guys, from an acting perspective, what was the most challenging scene to make? There's a load of action and spectacle, as you mentioned, but also there's a lot of character development. So which is actually harder? Uh, well, the, the, the action is, is exhausting and it's physically demanding, but, but I think what's harder in terms of your approach as an actor are, are the more emotional scenes. You, you, you put, there's a much greater personal responsibility in those scenes. The action scenes, there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen and a lot of people are going to make those scenes look good regardless. The emotional moments, that's up to you. Um, and, and it's, well, I shouldn't say that. It's up to you and the director, really. I mean, that, that's where Joe and Anthony are so fantastic. They're, they're, they have a wonderful, uh, a wonderful understanding of cinema. A lot of directors don't always want to reference other movies, but, but Joe and Anthony, they're, they're true cinephiles. They have a really extensive knowledge of the cinematic world, and, and, and their vernacular is very sophisticated in a way that they can give really simple direction where you can understand very quickly what the scene needs, and you trust them completely. So, so in those emotional moments, it's... It's a combination of, you know, it's fun, it's a little bit of fear, because every actor I know is egoic and terrified. But, but Joe and Anthony certainly make it a, a very comfortable landscape to, to take risks, and, and, and th those scenes, I think, are a lot more uh, challenging. That was a long-winded answer, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was all right. Thank you very much, Chris Evans, Captain America. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Mic number three, to so this lady over here, please. Hello, I'm Ayu, I'm from Indonesia. Anyway, I'm uh, regarding the acting skills. For sure, we don't need to question about that. But when it comes to press conference, do you guys prepare anything? Is there any message? Like the do's and the don'ts, don't answer yes, it. Love. Yes, love. Do and then... yes, love. <laughs> so please, guys, Cap, Bucky, and Falcon. No. We just, uh, we try to, you know, the thing that's different from us, and I think the reason why the four of us asked to be sent on this tour together is because we try to, you know, get to know the culture that we're in and eat the food and meet the people, whereas Team Iron Man, they're more about just going and being pampered and, you know, they go from the press conference to the spa, you know, from the spa to their jet, you know, stuff like that. And we're more about, you know, mingling, getting, it, you know, we hitchhike. Um, everybody hang on to me, I put on a jetpack, we go straight across, you know? Um, but no, it's, it's just, it's really more so about, you know, learning stuff about the people, eating, you know, um, stingray and uh, chili crab and stuff like that, learning yes la or no la, you know? <laughs> stuff like that, we really enjoy it. So that's mostly what we prefer, prepare for um, the press conference stuff. <laughs> Hashtag so honest. <laughs> Hashtag so cool. <laughs> okay, uh, back to the center. Mike number four, that gentleman over there. Uh, g'day guys, Jason Davis here from Australia. Welcome to South Hello, Australia. Hello Jason, how are you? Just great to see you guys. Congratulations on a fantastic <laughs> film. That's English, mate, but that's all right. It's fine. Uh, the ultimate wingman, the new benchmark for superheroes. Awesome badass and one half of the best sibling director duo uh, in Hollywood. Congratulations on an exceptionally entertaining film, guys. Thanks for putting the fun Thank you. Appreciate uh, that. into this film. I want to know, as fans of film, for each of you, who is your favourite on-screen hero and villain of all time? Mm. That's tough. Good, good, good question. Michael Keaton as Batman. 
See, I was going to say Michael Keaton has Beetlejuice. Oh, <laughs> but is Beetlejuice a villain or a good guy? No, he's a hero. Come on. <laughs> Danny DeVito Penguin, though. Danny people. DeVito as, as Penguin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's so Do they have so to be from odd. superhero films? Any film. Any film? Gary Oldman in uh, the uh, Leon, the professional. Professional, yeah. Let's go. Uh, Henry Fonda in Once Upon a Time in the West. Yeah. The bad guy. That was, yeah. that was yeah. a hell of a bad guy. Oh, man. Um, Hero. Maybe like, maybe like Michael Bean in The Abyss. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bean in anything. anything really. right. I mean, Michael Bean in Tombstone. Oh, come on. <laughs> Forget it. Johnny Ringo. There it is. I'm, I'm, that's some going on the record. Oh, Kilmer in Tombstone. That sure, there it is. We can give it all in Tombstone for hero good. and villain, because Val yeah. Kilmer is phenomenal. In that. Oh, and Bates in Misery. Ooh, Ooh that's a good yeah. one. That's a Kathy Bates. Oops. Kathy Bates. <laughs> <laughs> How about Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone as a hero? He's a pretty good I, hero. I think he's a pretty good hero. Wait, what did you Han say? Solo. Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone. You did say Macaulay Culkin in Home Alone? I did. That's what I thought you said. Yeah, yeah. he's great. Would, would he Michael Corleone qualify as a hero? Sure. John Candy and Uncle Buck, I mean, that's good. That's good. That's good. Well, this will go on all day. <laughs> we could. Yes. Next question. Eddie Murphy and Nutty Professor. <laughs> we did. He was, he was a great hero. He was a great hero. Mike number one, I, I saw a hand go up there. Hi, Moon here from Strange Times. You know, um, Falcon is described as having a bird suit. So how would you describe what team Iron Man is wearing? And also, does this rivalry between Team Cap and Team Iron Man spill over on the set? Is there a sensor button that we can use for this? Say that one more time, homie. <laughs> Come on, say it one more time. Come on. Yeah, how described as what? It's described as bird suit. So how would you describe what Team Iron Man is wearing? All right. Is it a trash can? Right. Yeah, I'm like, whoa, it's, we're going to beat this dude up after because he's obviously Team Iron Man. Um, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I feel like if mine is described as a bird suit, Iron Man should be described as a Coca-Cola can, right? <laughs> This shit looks like everybody just got drunk and started having some fun drawing them. <laughs> and vision should be described as like a big uh, marker. Right? It's like you just... Like a highlighter? Right? Who else is on it? I don't even know who's on the team. War Machine. On the team. Yeah, we're not even going to talk about Black Panther. He's just, you know... Uh, let's see. Scarlett Johansson is described as perfect. <laughs> Uh, Rhodey... Don Cheadle looks blind in that picture. He look, <laughs> he's looking way over there. He look, let's see, he's Coke can, perfect, uh, trash can, uh, magic marker, and Bring out Michelin the... car tires. <laughs> That's how we roll. <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. <laughs> And thank you, Straits Times, for that question. Oh, so much fun. All right, um, Mike, number four. That gentleman over there. Hi, my name is Danny Pichata from uh, Channel One HD Thailand, and this question goes for all you superheroes, the three of you. Uh, what is your workout regimen like? Because you have to be physically fit. And then one question for the cap. What is the physics behind your shirt? Does it actually bounce back or do you have to bounce it on something? I, I don't know. There really isn't much technical physics behind the shield. It's, it's all about the magic of movie making, and, and luckily it comes back to me when I needed to. Um, in terms of working out, you know, I, I think I don't think anyone here. I mean, I could be wrong, but for the most part, any type of like secret workout diet that doesn't really work. There's there's no special thing that we do that everyone else doesn't do. You go to the gym, you pick up heavy stuff, and you put it back down. And uh, you do that so you can't do it anymore, and uh, you get big. It's 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 real simple, in my in my in my opinion. Thoughts, fellas? Well, Chris doesn't like to talk about when we're not shooting. He does like ultimate frisbee. So he just you know goes to the beach and throws the frisbee all day. The problem is that's gonna like make Roberto right. for the rest of his tour. 
someone's gonna ask, oh, I heard you like Ultimate Frisbee. And I'll say, no, that's Mackie. I can see it, Captain America Shield Frisbees. There you go. Yeah. Okay, last two questions, guys. Um, that lady over there. Please introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I'm Yimmi. I'm an actress from Vietnam. Uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you on your new movies, and I want to ask about Captain America: Romantic Life. Uh, <laughs> uh, I want to ask that uh, which female comic book character would you pick to be your potential lover? Wow, that's tough. You know, I mean, now, now, now. <laughs> yeah, is, is Halle Berry in comic books? Anyway, um, well, and yet Catwoman. Oh, let's not forget that. Or, uh, 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 well, it, it's 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 tricky because you know, in, in the comic book, he follows. A, you know, in, in the comic book, it follows a certain plot line where, where there there is a relationship with Emily Van Camp, and it's. It certainly follows in the lineage in terms of where, where Cap considers his home to be with, with Peggy Carter and Sharon Carter is kind of an incarnation of what he sees as something familiar. Um, but, but the way the Marvel Cinematic Universe has unfolded, I've always felt that right, it's tough because I, I would say Black Widow, but we, we, we really established such a nice platonic thing. Um, oh, sorry. Mac, Mac, you know, Mac, you would take issue with that, but, but I, I feel that there's always been this kind of, um, you have two characters from very different worlds, uh, Cap and Black Widow, who have, have very different backgrounds and, and, and found a kind of comfort in one another at, at, at times of distress, and I always thought that would be a really interesting dynamic to pursue, but, but at the same time, it's really, it's very sweet and very pure that they've kept it platonic and that they've, they've, they've found something else besides an intimate relationship to kind of uh, lean upon. So, um, I don't know, I, I guess, I guess, I guess this was a long-winded answer of me saying I don't know. Uh, but, but yeah, I guess maybe Black Widow in, in, in some, some incarnation. Thank you very much for your question. Last question. <laughs> a gentleman at the end. Hi, I'm uh, Zed from Just Saying Asia, based here in Singapore. Um, now, we see in Civil War that it's a good, it's, okay, we've got Spider-Man who's come in, we've got Black Panther who's come in. How important is Captain America's Civil War going to be for the Marvel Universe? Is it going to be the next defining movie? And who's this question for? Uh, for Russo, please. The is it the next, I'm sorry, what movie? Is it the next uh, defining movie? I mean, we had Iron Man that started everything off. Yes. How important is Captain America's Civil War going to be? It's, in, in it's incredibly Marvel? important. I mean, I think, you know, um, Winter Soldier changed the, uh, you know, the, the external structure of the Marvel Universe uh, with the dissolution of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, I think that this movie changes the psychology of the Marvel Universe uh, in a very significant and important way. And the ramifications of Civil War are not over. They're gonna carry over significantly into Infinity War. Uh, so this movie is really setting up, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the two defining films of, uh, of all of phase one, two, and three, the Infinity War movies. Uh, and it put, puts all of the characters in a very, very complicated place. So I think, um, uh, it's, uh, it's critically important, probably the most important uh, Marvel movie to date. All right, and with that, we conclude the Q&A session. Thank you so much. Can we give our superheroes and our director another big round of applause? Chorizo, Celeste, Christmas, and Anthony Mackey. Uh, gentlemen, please proceed backstage. We have some superhero beverages for you guys and a foot massage as well. Uh, I'll see you guys shortly. You guys rock, man. I love you guys. You guys are fantastic.